Number 62. The velocity of the wind relative to the water is crucial to sailboats. Suppose a sailboat is in an ocean current that has a velocity of 2.2 meters per second in a direction of 30 degrees east of north relative to the earth. Okay. It encounters a wind that has a velocity of 4.5 meters per second in a direction of 50 degrees south of west relative to the earth. What is the velocity of the wind relative to the water? All right. So first, um, I sketched a little picture here, right? So here's a coordinate system, and here are the two vectors that they are describing. Uh, the first one that they're describing is the velocity of the water relative to the Earth, okay? And they said that uh, this velocity is 2.20, uh, right? So actually, I already made a slight, it's, that should be a zero in there. All right, so let me just put that in. Sorry, guys, 2.20 meters per second. And it is at an angle of 30 degrees east of north. All right, so that's fine. And the second vector they told us was they gave us a value of 4.5 meters per second at a direction of 50 degrees south of west, right, relative to the earth. And what are they talking about? They're talking about the wind. So instead of writing W for wind, I had to write A for air. All right, so they'll be the same thing because we're talking about water and that's a W and too many W's all over the place. So. Let's, okay, so now they're asking us, what is the velocity of the wind relative to the water? So what they're asking us is to find the velocity of the wind, which I'm calling air, all right, relative to the water, which is W. So this is what I'm looking for. Now, since this is a relative velocity problem, what I really like to start with is I like to start with my uh, relative velocity formula over here on the right. And if I'm looking to find this, what I'm going to do is plug that in for AC. All right, and then see what I need to know in order to solve for AC, okay? So remember that the velocity of AC is equal to the velocity of AB plus the velocity of BC. Uh, okay, A, B, and C could be whatever you like. So here, it's going to be the velocity of the air relative to the water should then be equal to the velocity of the air relative to the earth, right? Because that's the other, there's three items in this problem, air, water, and earth. So then B has to be the earth. Plus then the velocity of the earth, right? Relative to the water. Okay. So in order to find this, I need to know these two vectors. And if I can find these two vectors, then I can simply sum their components up, right? This is the basic resultant method, right? Resultant is equal to the sums of all the component vectors. Okay. So let's see what I'm given. So do I know this, the velocity of the air relative to the earth? Oh, we do, right? That was given. So that's easy peasy. I can just break that up into its X and Y components and find it. And do we know the velocity of the earth relative to the water? Well, no, but, but I do know the velocity of the water relative to the earth. So how does that help me? Remember this, that the velocity of AB is equal to negative velocity of BA. So if I need to find the velocity of the earth relative to the water, but I know the velocity of the uh, water relative to the earth, I just essentially have to find the negative of this, right? In other words, it would be a vector that opposes this one directly, right? Directly in the opposite direction. So like if I had to draw that, Right, it would look something like something like that or so, right? It would be opposing it. Actually, wait a minute. No, it would be, sorry, drew that. It should be on this side, okay? Yeah, the angles aren't quite right. Yeah, that looks pretty good, right? It would be this vector right here, okay? Where whatever X component was here then was positive, it would now be negative down there. Whatever Y component was here, oh, there goes the mailman and my window. So... Um, so whatever Y component, sorry, there is here, um, positive, it would now be uh, negative. All right. So, oh man, he's really going nuts today. Eh, who needs a window? So what we now can do is I can either leave it like this. So this is 30 degrees. So I can do this in one of two ways now. Either I can find the components of this vector here, meaning the Y, excuse me, the X and the Y, or I can leave this vector alone 
and just find the components of y and x for that vector and then just put a minus sign right next to them. Either way, we're gonna get the same answer, all right? So I think what I'm going to do though is I'm going to, just so the picture doesn't get too messy, I'm gonna leave it like this and then just negate all my answers, okay? So let's, uh, let's erase this and let's write our component table on out because we know we're gonna be needing the component table to solve this. Do you need a component table to actually solve it? No, I mean the component table is just something to help you organize uh, all the information, but I would highly recommend it. Okay, so we have the velocity of the air relative to the earth, then the velocity of the earth relative to the water. And when I sum those two up, I should get the resultant of the velocity of the air relative to the water. Okay, so let's find the components of the, of the vector, the velocity of the air relative to the earth, and that would be this one right here. Okay, so draw out the components there. So here, this would be the x component, right? Notice it's negative, so this is v x, and that's negative. And then the y component of that vector would also be negative as well. It would be negative v y. Okay, so first let's take a look at the x. So um, I know the I know the uh, hypotenuse here, right? That's this value. I know the angle. I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 50 will equal now negative vx. But instead of vx, I'm going to make it a little more specific. I'm going to write negative of ae, right, of the air relative to the earth in the x direction, all over 4.50. Okay? So now it would be negative the velocity of ae in the x direction. Okay, is equal to, so just solve it. So cosine of 50 times 4.5, 2.89. So we get a value of 2.89 meters per second. I'm just gonna leave out the units, okay? Because they're, they're all in meters per second. Now simply just take the negative sign and drag it on over. So there we go. So that's the value, negative 2.89. Let's plug it right into the table so we don't forget, 2.89. Now let's handle the y component. So same thing. I know the hypotenuse, right? It's 4.50. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. So that sounds like sine to me. So sine theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So now sine of 50 is going to equal the negative uh, velocity of the air relative to the earth in the y direction divided by 4.50. Cool. So now let's write this on out. So the velocity of the air relative to the earth in the y direction, I'm gonna bring the negative on over already. So sine of 50 times 4.5, so we get a value of 3.45. So 3.45 and that's meters per second. So plug that guy right in. So this is negative 3.45. Okay, now let's work on the next vector, right? Which is the velocity of the earth relative to the water. Now remember, I'm going to use then my vector of the velocity of the water relative to the earth. The only thing is I just have to, whatever x value I find, I gotta just take the negative of it. Okay, and whatever y value I find, I also have to take the negative of it, that's all. So let's draw those components in. So here's my y value, okay. And here's my x value in black. All right, cool, so I'll write this as vx. I'll leave it as positive for now, and then I'll write this as vy. Vy, I'll leave that as positive. Don't forget we gotta change it. I keep saying that so I don't forget. Okay, so let's first work with the x. Okay, let's do the x. So now, okay, so we know the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse of this triangle is 2.20, that's the magnitude of the velocity vector of the water with respect to the earth. So now, if I know this, and I know this angle, Right, and I'm finding the side opposite of that angle, I'm gonna use sine to actually find x. And this is exactly why I don't like to memorize those formulas where you always think, oh, right, cosine, always when I'm finding x, it's cosine or whatever. Well, yeah, when the angle that's given or that you're using is relative to the x-axis. But now this angle is relative to the y-axis. So now you have to use sine, okay? So sine of theta is equal to um, the opposite side over the hypotenuse, 
So the sine here of 30 will equal the <clears throat> opposite side, which is the velocity of the water with respect to the Earth in the x direction over 2.20. Okay. So the velocity of the water with respect to the Earth in the x direction will equal, okay, that will equal sine of 30 times 2.2, .2, and it's half, right? So it's 1.1. So 1.1 meters per second, 1.10. Um, that's great. Now remember, I don't want to know the velocity of the water relative to the Earth. I want to know the velocity of the Earth relative to the water. So therefore, the velocity of the Earth relative to the water in the x direction, since I flip the relativity of it, I then just simply fl flip the sign. Okay, so this is really what I want. So that gets plugged in, negative 1.10. Wunderbar. Now let's take a look at the y. Okay, remember, I know the hypotenuse value is 2.20. I know this angle. I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle. Therefore, now I'm going to use cosine. So here we're using cosine to find y. Okay, same reasons I discussed before. All right, so cosine of 30 is going to equal the a velocity in the y direction, so the velocity of the water with respect to the earth in the y direction, all divided by, oops, 2.20. So velocity of the water with respect to the Earth in the y direction is equal to cosine of 30 times 2.20. And where did the zero go? There it is. So we get 1.9, 1.91. Right, now remember, that's not what I want. I want to find the velocity of the Earth relative to the water in the y direction. So simply just negate it. So negative 1.91. So take that value. Okay, and plug it in, negative 1.91. And look at the thing of beauty. What do we need to do now? In order to find these components, we simply just add these up, okay? And add this side up. So, negative 2.989 uh, minus 1.1. So we get a value of negative 3.99. So negative 3.99. All right, great. And then same thing for the y. So we get negative 3.45 minus 1.91 and negative 5.36, negative 5.36, okay? So what does this vector look like, just out of curiosity? I'm sure you guys are extremely curious, as well as I am. Um, it would look something like this, right? Here's the x component, okay? It's in the negative direction, right? 3.99 negative. And then the y component of it looks like it's going to be down about here. Right, that should be about negative 5.36. And then the resultant vector, it's right there. Okay, here's the angle, here's the value. So how do we find it? Simple, Pythagorean's theorem, right? So we can simply now uh, do Pythagorean's theorem. I'm just going to use the shortened version. So square root of the sum of all of the x's squared plus the sum of all the y's squared. Okay, it all works out to be the same thing. So remember, my resultant vector here is the velocity of the air with respect to the water. So I'm just going to write that here is equal to the square root of negative 3.99. <clears throat> Oops, squared, squared, plus negative 5.36 squared. So the velocity of the air relative to the water will be, so second square root, 3.99 squared plus 5.36 squared. I know I didn't say negatives there, but remember, when you square a negative, it always becomes positive. So 6.68, 68 meters per second. So that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is the velocity of the wind. Uh, excuse me. Uh, that is the velocity of the air, right, which is the wind, relative to the water. I almost, got, I almost said, oh, wait a minute. Did we? No. A, is, a stand uh, stood for uh, wind here. So this is the answer. Now here's the thing, let's calculate the angle, okay? So uh, we really should for completeness sake. So remember, the angle here, um, the theta in my picture on the right-hand side, okay? That will be found by doing tangent of the opposite side, which is the y value, over the adjacent side, which is the x value. You can simply take the, square, uh, the uh, absolute values, okay? So tan of theta will be equal to 5.36 all over 3.99. So tan of theta, so simply I'll just do it all in one step since I'm running out of room. So do 5.36 divided by 
you got a value of 1.34 and then do inverse tan. So second tan of 1.34 to get rid of the tangent there. So it's 53.3. So 53.3. That's the angle. That's the theta. Okay, that is my angle here. So the guys, that should actually kind of make sense, right? It should make sense. Why does that make sense? Well, go back to the original picture on the left-hand side. Remember, I said that this vector in here should look something something like that maybe, right? When I Because I had to negate it. So what's the angle in here? This would have been 30, right? It should be the same as that. Now here's a question. What is the angle in here between the x-axis and the red vector? Well, remember the whole thing's 90 in here, right? And if this is 30, that simply makes the area in black, that makes it 60. So wait a minute, that's interesting, right? The Vector in yellow is 50. The vector in red essentially has a measure of 60 from the x-axis. And my resultant vector, which was the summation of this vector in gold and this vector in red, had a value of what? 53.3, nice and in the middle. Not directly, but between the two. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, nor it might be, but most likely it won't be. It depends on the math. But it should lie greater than 50 and less than 60, which it does. So it should all make sense. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. These are great problems to do. Uh, practice, practice, practice as much as you can. All right, and please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome, actually. So uh, until next time.